everyone and welcome to my studio. I'm Diane and today I'm going to do a quick flick through my sketchbook and a warm-up which will involve painting some flowers in some new colours which I have just received in the post from Great Art. So let's get started. Okay so here we have uh, three colours which I've just received. This is uh, Schmincke Quinacridone Gold which I've already squeezed out because I've started to use and this is a wonderful colour so that's our yellow for our palette and then I've got here Potter's Pink which is a colour I've never used before and it looks exactly like it says a kind of colour of, of unbaked clay so that's an interesting colour and this one I haven't squeezed out yet I have no idea it's called Caribbean Blue and it's by Old Holland which is a new brand to me but they are advertised as being very highly pigmented, the most intense colours that you can get. Called Old Holland, they come from Holland, obviously, so uh, we'll see how that one works out. So that's basically my palette for this little warm-up. A yellow, a red and a blue. Obviously not pure uh, colours, but uh, that will make us presumably some greens and we'll find out how that's going to work in a minute. Okay, so this is my sketchbook just flicking through here to find an empty page. And okay, so the other day I did these flowers and I thought I might be able to develop that for a warm up. And it's quite a interesting technique. It looks quite pretty. So here's a piece of paper. I haven't put holes in it yet, but I will. Okay, so this really is a warm-up and uh, I haven't painted actually for a couple of days. I had to go to the dentist yesterday, so uh, so that kind of held me back a bit. Before I start doing anything, I need to just test out these colours. This is the Caribbean Blue, which is that's quite nice, isn't it? Let's see how that goes with Cranacridone Gold and what we're going to get there. Uh, this is Schmincke Quinacridone, it's not as intense as some of the Quinacridone golds that I've used, I don't think. But uh, there we are getting a, a range of greens. If I used a bit more of the blue and a bit more of the gold, I'd get a stronger green. There's nothing wrong with that, is there, as far as leaves goes. And then if we use the Potter's Pink, I should have wetted this first. If we use the Potter's Pink, which is, uh, it's very fashionable at the moment. Are you interested in what's fashionable? That's, a, that's going to make a very nice gray actually. Isn't it? Look at that. Doesn't that make you think of misty cloudy days like today? But if we were to take the blue, the pink, and the yellow, what would we get? Kind of olive green. Hmm. And the one I haven't tried so far is the Mixing the pink with the quinacridone, what does that give us? Well, we can see that the um, the pinkness of this potter's pink is more of a brown. So when we add it to the yellow, we're getting something like burnt sienna. Okay, well there's no, nothing there that's too disastrous, so let's try and paint some flowers. I'm not sure whether this technique is going to actually work with these colours because they're quite soft, but let's see. Look, this is 
this is uh, one way to paint a flower. Now I know that not many flowers are blue, but some are. Okay. So I'm just using a brush that has no paint on it to draw out, allow to flow the paint from the centre dots that I put in. So we let that do its thing. Let's try one with yellow. This is useful to explore the way a new pigment that you've not used before works. You do the same thing with different colours and see if there's any difference in the way it flows. This one is clearly much, much less intense than the blue. <clears throat> That's what you would expect really, since it's such a soft colour in the first place. What you can do if you want to make these flowers more interesting is you can just drop a little bit of paint into the edges. They look a bit like pinks or carnations, don't they? And let that spread. Maybe reinforce what's in the middle a bit. to mix my green up. I'll put that blue I had on the brush there and then pick up some Do the same with here, perhaps. That's dried a bit, so it's not going to run in the same way. I quite like it if you have a little bit of yellow and a bit of green on the brush at the same time when you're trying to make leaves. <clears throat> then they come out with a sort of blended green colour, which is nice. We're just playing here, you know. Uh, I haven't tried doing this technique with big dots yet, so let's see what happens there. Now oh, that's making me think of a 
chrysanthemum type of thing. Let's see what happens when we put some blue in the middle. We never really know how these things are going to look until they're until they're finished. This flower in the middle here, this pink one, seems a little sad and weak, so I'm just add something to it. And then maybe mix. I don't know, really, these colours are a little bit unknown. So I'll just put something darker in the middle and see what happens. Okay, well there's my finished little uh, warm-up using Potter's Pink, Quinacridone Gold, uh, Caribbean Blue and uh, not much else. I um, hope you enjoyed watching me uh, do this little painting which is basically just a warm-up to get me back into the swing of things again. Um, and if you did learn something and enjoy it, perhaps you could give me a like and subscribe. It would be great and I look forward to seeing you here again soon. So bye for now and see you again later. Bye.